When the enhanced AX multi-cannon turret hit the market, it made a ton of really little impacts on Thargoid holes across the bubble. This new weapon does not look any different from its older Aegis inspiration, but feels much different than its progenitor. It's an excellent improvement on the original, addressing its biggest flaw with minimal downsides, though failing to overcome its other, less significant issues. The enhanced AX multi-cannon turret provides a slight increase to total damage per second, damage per individual shot, and more than doubles shot speed from 1600 meters per second to 4000 meters per second, matching its maximum range of 4 kilometers, meaning that rounds fired from any size turret on this platform reach their maximum range in one second. All this comes at the measly cost of a 0.05 megawatt increase to the module's base power draw. There is no impact on the distributor draw or thermal load. The end result is a weapon that feels far more responsive than it ever has, covering distances much greater than was previously possible and with less lead time. Ships equipped with this weapon are able to project an effective defensive bubble extending out a full 2 kilometers into space. Though this weapon should be able to fire farther out, in my playtesting, the turrets would not engage at maximum range like normal, instead waiting until targets were closer. This strange behavior is actually a benefit because it helps ensure that shots fired connect more often than with the older Aegis variation, further increasing effective accuracy and ammunition efficiency. The Aegis AX multi-cannon draws its heritage from way back when the Cyclops Interceptor was first introduced. At the time, it made for a difficult fight, best undertaken in groups. As a pre-Guardian weapon, it was great for inflicting supporting damage, and was used alongside the AX missile rack to facilitate hard exertion. This was a messy process, because both weapons lacked the shot speed needed in order to take advantage of their maximum range. With a 1200 meter per second shot speed, target lead times were difficult to manage on the multi-cannon. Most Thargoid vessels were fast enough to outmaneuver it beyond one kilometer range, requiring these weapons to be fitted to fast, agile hulls, which tended to exclude large ships from effective close engagement. Since the AX multi-cannon was introduced, its mounting options have been limited to fixed and turret variations. Since there have not been any gimbaled offerings for the multi-cannon in the AX categories, and turrets are able to track hostiles more effectively while maneuvering, turrets became the favorite weapon for larger, slower ships, and fixed variants became popular on smaller, faster ships. Though the slow shot speed meant that fixed operators often needed to close to scattergun range to overcome the lead times. This is a big part of the reason why Guardian weapons became so popular. The difference between 1 km and 500 meters isn't a hard cross when fighting Thargoids, and if pilots had to get nearly that close anyway, why not just mount a shard cannon and go for the full send? Turrets remain a set-and-forget weapon with a single click granting the weapon permission to fire at a given target. Turrets continue to fire until the target is dead, passes out of range, or a new target is selected. This layer of abstraction from pilot control means that, while in turret mode, the weapon could not be asked to sub-target exerted hearts unless a detailed AX scan was completed. After a successful scan, the turret could deal acceptable damage from within 2 kilometers, but until that scan was delivered, the only way to fire on an exerted heart effectively was by locking the turrets in forward fire mode and aiming them like fixed weapons. This critical weakness remains in the enhanced weapon, meaning that a fast and maneuverable ship is still required to get a detailed AX scan before the enhanced turrets are useful at targeting exposed Thargoid hearts. However, once that target information is available, this new turret is very effective at chipping them down from further away. Only the Gauss Cannon outranges this weapon now, though it has the advantage of manually targeting exposed hearts, and will likely remain the preferred choice on agile, interceptor-focused vessels. My playtesting involved the two ships which I believe benefit the most from this weapon on paper, the Crate Mark II and the Type 10 Defender. This is due to the abundance of excellent Guardian weapons available for the size 2 hardpoint, including the Enhanced Salvation Guardian weapons. These weapons are still superior where players have access to them, providing for more DPS on harder targets, though the enhanced AX multi-cannon fits in well with any ship that can support it. 
the Type 10 was already an excellent scout screening ship and a resilient damage tank when leveraging the old AX multi-cannon turrets. But this new platform makes it an absolute scout shredding beast, wiping out entire scout swarms from a near stationary position. The Type 10 Defender can now project its influence twice as far out, reducing the amount of travel it needs to undertake and enabling it to more effectively screen nuisance targets that would otherwise bog down interceptor-focused ships. Unfortunately, these turrets do not tip the Type 10 into territory where it can effectively kill interceptors on its own. It's simply not fast or maneuverable enough to acquire the critical detailed scan needed for its turrets to be able to target Thargoid hearts. With that scan data, the Type 10 is a force to be reckoned with, though this limitation still relegates it to a supporting fire role, since other ships must provide an opening before the Type 10 can be made of greatest use. The crate is a different story. With a much higher base speed and maneuverability, I found this ship was as effective as the Type 10 at hunting and eliminating scouts. The extra effective range of the turrets meant that aggressive turns were less necessary to keep scouts aligned with turret firing arcs, and the turrets were more capable of firing at Thargoid scouts as they attempted to retreat from an attack run. The overall pace of combat and time between engagements was lower in the crate with these weapons equipped. Though being generally less sturdy than the Type 10, it was still possible to suffer chip and caustic damage that forced the crate to retreat for repairs more often. Against interceptors, a solo crate equipped with these weapons struggles. It's just not quite maneuverable enough to reliably get the scans necessary for the turrets to sub-target. Pilots using this weapon must waste valuable time and ship integrity focusing on getting scans, accepting all incoming damage from the interceptor, swarm, and scouts alike. Once a scan is acquired, the turrets make short work of a Thargoid heart, but the detailed scan requirement adds extra complexity to its use that fixed weapons don't have. There is word on the horizon of the first ever gimbaled AX multi-cannon, which I expect will change the game dramatically by allowing for easier manual operation without target data, and greater accuracy with a higher damage output. The Type 10 will likely still prefer the turrets, but the crate will definitely be able to make use of gimbaled AX multi-cannons once they become available. To be fair, the enhanced multi-cannon does not introduce any new weaknesses that weren't already an issue with the Aegis platform. Placing these turrets in free fire mode locks them up, stopping any of the weapons from firing, so you still have to manually target something and click the fire button to start the party. Enhanced multi-cannons still can't damage the swarm, aren't very effective at shooting down caustic missiles, and do piss-all exertion damage to large interceptors like the Medusa and Hydra. The enhanced multi-cannon does greatly improve upon its predecessor, and should definitely replace the Aegis variant wherever it is being used. At about 4.4 million credits for size 3 and 2.1 million for size 2, the enhancements are less than a million credits more expensive than the Aegis variant, making upgrades cheap. With enhanced weapons being made available at all rescue ships, this is easily the most accessible AX upgrade that has ever been made available to the player base in the history of Thargoid combat. With even more of these enhanced modules planned in the near future, it's safe to say the next couple of weeks will be interesting. Hopefully, we'll see some of the supporting modules, like the AX Scanner, AX Ship-Launched Fighters, and Meta Alloy Armor get attention at some point. Since the Proteus field remains a possible concern going forward, and it almost totally negates the effectiveness of all Guardian technology. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.